Welcome to worship at New Scotland Presbyterian Church. I'm the Reverend Holly Cameron, and so glad to have you with us on this sixth Sunday of the season of Easter. And just want to say that the flowers that are on the pulpit today are donated by the Vosberg family. So let's begin our worship with the Easter proclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. God of all time, your word was in the beginning, woven into the design of all that was ever made, into the design of all that is ever good. Your will for us in Jesus is the peace which the world cannot give. Your abiding gift is the advocate he promised. As we come to this time of worship, Silence in us any voice but your own. Let your word calm all troubled hearts and dispel every fear. Guide us through all the times of our lives so that our wills may be in harmony with your will and our feet may follow in the path of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God's mercy and love surround us always and reach out to us in kindness to offer a new beginning for each one of us. The past is finished and gone. Everything has been made fresh and new. Believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 66 with some of the verses named. So we'll be reading verses 8 through 20. Let us listen for the music God puts in our hearts as we listen to the words of this song. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. For you, O God, have tested us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Yet you have brought us out to a spacious place. I will come into your house with burnt offerings I will pay you my vows, those that my lips uttered and my mouth promised when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of the sacrifice of rams. I will make an offering of bulls and goats. 
Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly, God has listened. He has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Here ends the reading. May God bless us with understanding. Amen. So now we have time for our kids, and I hope the kids can be present for this part of the video, and I'll come out of the pulpit as I do each week for our kids' time. Hi kids, I miss you guys so much. I'm really glad that I can talk to you through this video while we are apart. You know, I was thinking, it seems like it's been a very long time since we could all be together. And usually, if we know we're gonna be apart from people we care about, we usually take something to help us remember them. Like when I was little, I had a stuffed dog that my grandmother gave me so if I went to spend the night at someone's house, or if we went off on vacation, I always took my dog with me so that I would not be homesick and I would not feel so alone. And when I was older and went to college, I took pictures of my family with me so that I would not feel so alone there. Right now, I have a lot of drawings and cards that you guys made for me on my birthday this year, and they're in my office, and I love to look at them because it helps me not feel so alone to remember that you and I have been together and we will be together again. Now, we're going to hear a story in a few minutes about Jesus. He did that for his friends, too. When Jesus was going to go away, he said, I don't want you to be lonely, so I am going to send God's Spirit to be with you. And he did. Now, we can't always see God's Spirit, but Jesus promised that it would be with his disciples and it would be with all of us who want to follow in Jesus' way. So we have God's Spirit in us, too. We can't see it, but sometimes we can feel it. Like if we see something beautiful in creation, like a rainbow or some flowers or animals that we love, we can feel God's spirit in us. And sometimes we feel God's spirit if we're really sad and someone comes and helps us feel better. And sometimes we feel God's spirit when we're so happy we just can't even sit still. And we also feel God's spirit when we come to worship. God's Spirit helps us to know how to pray and how to read the Bible to figure out things that will help us know what is the right thing for us to do. And God's Spirit can sometimes be felt when we are in worship. So there's lots of ways that we feel God's Spirit helping us and guiding us. You know, whenever we do something for someone out of love, we feel God's Spirit then, too. So for the last few weeks, we've been looking at photographs that remind us about God's hope and God's love and that feeling we get of God's Spirit in us. We've been seeing pictures of rainbows and animals and flowers and our other church members and how they're worshiping at home. So let's take a few minutes and look at some of those pictures now.
Those were such great pictures. I'm so glad you guys have been sending them in and I hope you'll keep sending us pictures. We'll keep seeing more and more every week. And if you didn't see your picture this week, then just tune in because it'll probably be in next week or maybe the week after. So don't forget to send us pictures that remind us of God's hope and God's love. It can be rainbows and animals and flowers. It could even be stuffed animals because we love our stuffed animals and they help us feel better all the time. So I look forward to seeing more of your pictures and let's have a prayer together. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to help us learn about your love. And thank you for sending your Holy Spirit who helps us to feel that you are always with us. When we are alone, remind us to read the Bible and pray for your help and reach out to someone who might also feel alone. Help us to feel your love deep inside us and help us to share your love by being kind to other people. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>
in many ways that we have known. And it can be alternately frustrating, discouraging, aggravating, and depressing. We have been raised to believe that we can do whatever we want, whenever we want. So to suddenly be told that we cannot leaves us bewildered and leaves some people feeling that their rights have been trampled on because freedom is an American virtue after all. Freedom is an American virtue, but it is not necessarily a Christian virtue. In today's gospel lesson, we heard Jesus talking to his disciples after their last meal together. Jesus is about to leave them, and he is trying to prepare them as best he can for what their lives will be like once he is gone. He tries to remind them of what they have learned in their time together, the stories he has told them, the signs they have seen. He gives them some final thoughts and challenges about what it all has meant and how they should carry on. But one thing he does not say is, well, you've seen all you need to see and you've heard all you need to hear, so you are fully prepared to carry on this ministry. You are free to now go out and do whatever you want to do. Good luck. You are on your own. No, even with all they have seen and done together, Jesus says that when he is gone, another advocate will come to be with them. Jesus is talking about the Holy Spirit that will come after his ascension. But the word he uses here is the Greek word paraclete. And it can mean advocate, helper, companion, comforter, teacher. In other words, this new paraclete will be all the things that Jesus has already been to the disciples. Because Jesus, as he has been with them in these three years, has been their teacher, their helper, their companion, their comforter, and their advocate. Now, he says, God will send the Holy Spirit so the disciples will be able to continue the work that they have been doing with Jesus. What Jesus does not give them is their freedom. He does not leave them to their own devices. He does not expect them to find their own way as best they can. He says, the Holy Spirit will abide with you and will be in you. In other words, they will have the same intimate personal connection with this paraclete that they have known with Jesus. Now this message to the disciples is a message for us too. When Jesus calls us to follow him, he does not expect us to be some kind of spiritual superheroes. He asks us to be obedient and to follow him. But he does not expect that we will be able to do it alone. In fact, Jesus knows that we will have to be dependent on him if we are truly to do his work. And being dependent is not something that we value in our society. Children fight hard to become independent from their parents, and aging parents fight hard to stay independent of their adult children. I hear people say all the time that they struggled alone with some situation because they did not want to be dependent on someone else to have to come in and help them. Young people remain unmarried because they do not want to be dependent on another or have one who is dependent on them. Older neighbors become isolated in their houses because they do not want to be dependent on others for assistance. 
Of course, we're all isolated in our houses right now, but isolation takes over when we feel we cannot reach out to others to ask for what we need. This is an American idea that we do not need anyone else to get through this life that we can do, or at least we think we should do, everything on our own. Today's gospel shows us a different way. It is a way of dependence and obedience. We hear Jesus say, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. Then immediately he says he will provide a way for us to follow those commandments. He says he will give us the gift of an advocate, a helper, a teacher, a comforter. This Holy Spirit, he says, will be with us always. Now I said earlier that what Jesus is promising in this passage is a paraclete. Paraclete literally means one who is called alongside. So the Holy Spirit has been called to walk alongside us. And if we are to follow Jesus' commandments, then we will need to depend on the relationship with the Spirit that he has given us. In fact, if we look at the picture that Jesus is painting in this conversation, we might think of the Christian faith as training in obedience and dependency. The military does training like that. Its members are taught to obey the commands of superior officers, and it is a place where every member depends on all the other members around them. Jesus is doing that in this reading. He tells his followers, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. And he commands us to love. He commands us to go out, to serve, to make disciples of all nations, to call attention to the places where God's kingdom is breaking into this world. He says that we can do these things because his spirit is in us and will help us. We need that help because his commands are not easy. They often go against our natural instincts. His commands are things like Praise God more than you praise yourself. Or take an honest look at your life and confess your sins. Or forgive your enemies. Or if someone tries to force you to give them something, give it cheerfully and give them a little bit extra too. Who among us can carry out these kinds of commands unless we have some help? Jesus promises us that with the help of his spirit, we can obey these difficult commands. We have that spirit so that we will be supported and comforted in our efforts. But the spirit is not just for our comfort. Jesus promises his spirit will come alongside of us so that we in turn will come alongside others. He has come alongside his disciples to teach and comfort them. Then he sends the spirit, the paraclete, to be with them so that they will teach and comfort others. This is our calling as his followers. We are called to come alongside others to offer support and comfort to all who are in need. Maybe, maybe we do that in forgiving one who has wronged us. Maybe we do that in being kind to someone who's being rude or aggressive. Maybe we do that in reaching out to someone who is alone. 
Maybe we do that in restricting our own freedom to keep others safe. Maybe we do that in offering comfort to someone in pain. Maybe we do that in accompanying someone on their walk of sorrow or regret. We need God's presence, especially in times of vulnerability, fear, and uncertainty. So we have the Holy Spirit, a constant companion, who walks alongside of us to teach us, to lead us, to comfort us, to embolden us, to strengthen us, and to enable us to be more than we could ever be all on our own. Jesus promises that presence is in us, and he calls us to be that presence for others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Let us be gathered in prayer. We give you thanks, O oh God, for our families and for the community of faith. We thank you for our friends and loved ones who accompany us along life's journey so that we do not have to fight the good fight of faith alone. We thank you for babies and children who give us hope for the future. And we thank you for elders who give us perspective and help us to know our history. We thank you for the many differing gifts you have given your people. And we pray that all may be led to discover, develop, and share our gifts for the sake of Christ's work in the world. God of seed time and harvest, we thank you for the earth on which we live for the soil being prepared for planting, and for water providing refreshment to all of life. We thank you for farmers and gardeners, those who care for orchards, and all who supply our food. We depend on you, O oh God, for sun and rain that nourish the seeds, and we pray that all who nurture flowers will share their beauty with friends and neighbors, and we pray that all who raise crops will know their partnership with you and earn a respectable living. O oh God of comfort, on this day when we remember Jesus last night with his friends, we pray for all who know the experience of being abandoned. Keep watch over orphans and widows, over refugees with no place to call home, over those whose lives have been ravaged by natural disasters, over those who were isolated and unable to see their loved ones, over those who are grieving the death of a beloved. You have promised to be present always, 
and we pray for your comfort to all who feel alone this day. O oh God of healing, we remember the sick and the dying, those who have lost their work and health insurance and are facing food insecurity. We pray for those in prison and those imprisoned by addiction. Finally, O oh God, we pray for all those whom we have forgotten, knowing that nothing escapes your tender care. Use us, O oh God, to accompany any who are alone or in need this day. Help us to live more and more in the way of Jesus Christ, and hear us as we say together now the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. we have been blessed with so many gifts that we want to give back. We give financial gifts not because God needs them, but because we need to continue to learn more and more about how to be generous. Churches depend on the generosity of members and friends to carry out our ministries. So if you can send a gift, a financial gift at this time, please know how grateful we are to receive that gift. If all you can give us in this time are your prayers, please know we are so grateful for that gift. We have so many ways of reaching out and connecting with a smile, with a card, with a phone call, with decorations in our houses and yards. There are so many ways that we can reach out and know we are not alone. We love each other, we care for each other. We are in this together.
As we end our worship today, remember the promise of Jesus. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Go in peace. Alleluia. Amen.